dearest to you all, you wonderful special people from around the world. Because if you check that date, my friends, we are less than a month away from several hundred of you being here in Manchester for PreachCon 2022. Years and years we have waited during this global pandemic to spend time together in the most magical, wonderful way we can possibly put on for you guys. And it is happening. It is less than a month away until we're here. Until we can party together, we can see each other, hugs will happen, dreams will come true. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. There will be no PreachCon billboard. There is nothing to uh, billboard about it. But it will be happening. Some of your favorite content creators will be here. Oh, I can't wait for you guys to experience it. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. It will not be streamed, unfortunately, for those of you who can't make it. But I'm sure the pictures will flow and people will regale with tales. And hopefully next year, you guys will be able to come. That is what my hope is. And maybe we'll take it on the road. That is the ultimate dream, is to take it on the road. So we can visit countries like Australia. We can visit the US and do a couple of things there. Maybe visit Canada. Maybe do those kind of things so we can go around. And not only can we see many more of you around the world, because those of you who are flying over from those countries, I believe this year we're as far as Russia, Japan, Someone's coming from New Zealand, Australia. We have many people coming from the US this year. Big thanks to those guys. We are fully aware of how much expensive that is because we have to deal with it. Uh, but we want to we want to see you all. Pay me and I'll come. That's not how it works. Why don't you pay me for being here, Nick? You fucking poor. You sit in my chat with no sub badge asking me to pay you. What do you think this is? What do you think this is? I've been on my feet all day playing VR. <laughs> playing games it's just unbelievable right it's just unbelievable it's so sad it's so sad pay my sub <laughs> we've got this system all backwards i'm now paying the subs oh it's all gone fucking wrong it's all gone pear-shaped and i hate everything about it uh but not only that if you can't make an in-person appearance i fully understand my friends i do fully understand which is why which is why tomorrow we are throwing what we believe to be the biggest party that Final Fantasy XIV has ever seen. And it's going to be good. And it starts about 6 p.m. tomorrow is when the party starts. We will be live before that because I have some setup and stuff to do. But we will be indeed having the great rejoining. We will partner up with Zeppler team. Team Zeppler. Uh, in order to uh, exacerbate this, the rejoining shall be good. Now, this thing is going to have a load of things that we haven't seen before, including, including the Lalafell show, <laughs> the performance of a lifetime. Uh, the Lalafells uh, did a preview. We saw them. They're coming over from the Light Data Center uh, in order to spend time with us. They will be putting on a performance uh, for everybody. There you go. If you got one, good luck. <laughs> If you got one, good luck. If you didn't, unlucky. Uh, I did my best. I did my best. If you were a dodger, that's unfortunate. But I did my best to help you out. Sorry, Madcap. I tried, buddy. I tried. Yes. So we're, we're throwing the first ever Final Fantasy XIV block party. That is our contribution. We will be going over to the Light Realm. So if you're not aware, we have now got the ability to travel between the Chaos Realms and the Light Realms. We can merge together in one big go. And therefore, we will travel over to Light, where we will meet Team Zeppler and the Bunny Squad. And they're throwing a glamour competition, to which I will win. Easy for me. Uh, and then we'll be returning to Chaos for our block party. And a block party is because we have a new ward, which we moved into in Ishgard. We have a big, ginormous mansion. But we also share that space with many other free companies, like 20 or so. And nine of them are joining us in this party and they are putting on their own thing so we will be going from house to house and each of them has been decorated and themed and are being staffed by the wonderful people at endless nights they will be running their bars they will have dancers they will have all sorts of shit for us to engage in and have fun with there'll be lalafell performances and other than that i have kept myself in the dark i have no idea what is going to be at these other houses but we will be able to go from house to house and enjoy the hell out of it we will ride in style in the cars as we move between them i'm sure there's a brothel in one of them uh i'm sure there is i'm absolutely sure of it but it's going to be a hell of a night i mean literally i'm going to be getting some beers for this i'm going to get myself a nice case of beer i've got to be here with you guys i'm going to get nice and drunk 
and we're going to have a ton of fun. So that is going to be tomorrow. <laughs> that is going to be a ton of fun. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. But it's not why you're here right now, though. Not why you're here right now. You're here to have some fun stories to chill out and relax to. And I know our lurkers out there, if we can get a lurker roll call in the chat for the guys who are playing something else and listening into drama time, why don't you show your face? Why don't you show your face? Why don't you take one second to alt tab and just say hello and let us know. Lurkers, I love you guys because this whole fucking thing does not work without our lurkers. If every single one... Imagine if all these people were talking to me all the time. So drink that in for a second. Regular chatters. Can you imagine what it'd be like if all these wonderful people who choose to spend their time with us every single day uh, actually talk to us all the time? So res respect that squad. Respect that squad. Yes, and hides again. Yeah, go back to what you're doing. It's fine. We're going to have some fun because I have some... St Finally, some of you are sending in some quality FF14 stories, uh, which we've been waiting for for a while. Uh, trying to claim that FF14 does not have uh, drama in it. Liars. <laughs> this... And, and this one really caught my eye. When Beck sent me the stories today, this one really caught my eye. This, the mighty story of Mr. Floaty Head. Mr. Floaty Head. And apparently this involves the lengths. The lengths that some uh, free company went to in order to avoid spoilers in their chats. Because if you don't know, the story is very precious in Final Fantasy XIV. And for good reason. It's very good. Uh, but they did not want spoilers in their free company chat. A rule that the crawlers actually live by, despite the 400 members of our free company or whatever it is. Spoilers in the free company chat is not allowed. That is a big no-no. Uh, but lo most people actually uh, live by that rule. Because it's polite. Spoilers? Madge. Spoilers get very madge. If you spoil that story for some people... Uh, people get very, very pissed. Uh, so I, I'm interested to see what other free companies went to to see that. Great googly moogly. Good God. Good God. <clears throat> it's got, actually, that's the kind of thing Crawl's got magic about. Of course, of course. Right, we need two free company names uh, from our live audience over here. Um, make them FF style. I mean, ideally not like our neighbors in our ward, which are Vaj and Fap. <laughs> The Tiger Mafia, that, the Buns of Light, that makes contribute for tomorrow. The Buns of Light. Oh, I, why did I type that in the chat? Buns of Light, and of course, we'll go with Crawlers in the Dark. Crawling into Chaos. Oh, I like that. Yeah, we'll go with the Buns of Light and Crawlers into Chaos. That will be our two free companies in celebration of tomorrow. And that works pretty well. Okay, uh, let's have some fun. <laughs> Dear Preacher, in your wonderful chat. You're getting buttered up. I'm getting my guilty hammer ready. Yeah, if anybody's being this nice to us at the start, they're clearly guilty. I have a tale for you today. I have a tale of you all to follow along and figure out... Oh, we do need judgment. Get your emotes ready. Get your emotes ready, my subscribed friends. Not you, pause. Who was in the wrong... And who was not? Mm. And if it was blasted way out of proportion or not. Okay. Was this taken out? I imagine if this involves spoilers, there is nobody here who thinks this was blown out of proportion. But let's find out. Our tale begins in the wonderful world of Eorzea. Where the walker of the end was brand new and had just come out. So I was a part of a free company named the Buns of Light. And we got along with each other and we had the best of times, my friends. The best of times. Now with the new raid coming out, we wanted to put together a static team for our free company. And we were able to do that pretty easily. A whole eight of us were playing together. Dying together, cracking jokes and having a good time making fun every so often when someone goofed up and killed us all. Things were great. It was all going pretty damn well. Now, we also had another free company that we were friends with. And we did some maps and other events with them. And they were called the Crawlers into Chaos. We would merge with them sometimes so we could go and get mounts. As, you know, and have little parties and get-togethers with this free company. It was the Buns of Light and the Chaos Crawlers all merged together in one happy family. 
No real issues between us. And our static was very excited. Really excited to actually do some good raid progress together. Then we hit a roadblock. Our first real major roadblock. And many people in your chat, although you don't because you're... <laughs> because you're lazy as fuck. Okay. <laughs> kind of rude. But you won't because you're lazy as fuck. We'll know about the second boss in the brand new raid. Okay. First of all, fuck you. Second of all, you're right. I have no idea. <laughs> Second of all, yeah, you know, I, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I will know soon enough. We are nearly done with our extremes and then savages will begin. Uh, but yeah. <sighs> yeah. We wanted to talk about it. Work it out. It was, we were so hyped about what we were doing and the brand new raid. Now, as a little side note for you guys, one of the major big things you do not do in Final Fantasy XIV is spoil things. This is a big commandment set down from the heavens of Squeenix itself. And the people, the people will shun you. They will bring torches and pitchforks to you and rage at you if you spoil the game's story. I am not going to do that. A part of this tale is about such spoilers coming out. And I will let you know if it really was a spoiler or not. Okay, then... Okay, you're so protective of this that you won't tell us what the spoiler was for fear of spoiling the current Drama Time audience. I can respect that. I can respect that. So we all we need to know, apparently, is that some sort of spoiler is involved okay the author is t taking steps not to spoil for the current audience which is fine there are a lot of sprouts in my chat who have uh, who have come over there are plenty of sprouts i still see them around in the crawlers chris you fucking lazy prick <clears throat> so here we are we're talking about the bosses in the most vague way possible and so those that may not have reached that point in the game yet in the free company they wouldn't get spoiled so I saw in chat that the other static raid group within our free company were doing the same boss, but did not name it or anything like that. Nothing. And I came up with a stroke of genius. Why don't we call the boss Mr. Floaty Head? That means nothing to anybody, right? A floating head appears in so many dungeons in the game. We'll just call him... Mr. Floaty Head. And that will make it all right for everybody. Now I will say that I wished everyone was fine with this. But Dantius of the Buns of Light had words to share. Dantius joins into this conversation and goes, Oi! No spoilers, mate. Watch your mouth. M-O-U-F. Mouth. This struck me as left field. What are you going on about, Dantius? And then War Saint of the Chaos Crawlers does a reply. It says, stop spoiling it. Dantius goes on to say how by calling it Mr. Floaty Head and talking about the boss that we have literally ruined the story of the whole fucking thing. That he legitimately might not even bother doing the raid now because of the conversation we were having. He then suggests that because we have been openly discussing the brand new bosses, and in particular Mr. Floaty Head, that we should be punished in some way as we are fully aware that it's basically against the terms of service in his view, to talk about story spoilers in Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> they should be punished! Bring forth the brand! We will brand them on the forehead with spoilers! The big S. You will be branded with the big S upon your forehead so that others may know to avoid you because you are spoiling, dripping in spoils. Now, Warset and I are still just going... On about, what is the problem here exactly? Mr. Floaty Head? 
Here I was. Put yourself in my shoes. I'm just having a casual chat while flipping through stuff on the market board. War Saint was standing in front of our free company home, just confused on what the fuck is the problem here. Dantius begins to get very angry with me. You called him Mr. Floaty Head. You have now spoiled that the second boss is a large floating head. There are many people in this free company who have yet to see the new raid. And now you have ruined the surprise for them. They then decide it's time for an officer meeting about this subject. So, I'm called into the officer meeting. Warsent and I go on, and Dantius gets back into chat saying how we're just the worst fucking people. How bad this situation is. Warsent replies to him saying, dude, dude, if Mr. Floatyhead is a spoiler, then I don't know what the fuck a spoiler is. I think you're being ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous. Something along the lines of that. I was sat there going, is this really happening? Is this really where we are? Mr. Floaty Head? Things settled down and went silent for a minute. And War Saint and I go back to doing our thing while unknown to us, the officer forums was turning into a fire, a raging inferno. Yeah, in the conversation, myself and Warsaint were put on possible chopping block because the spoiler was so bad in Dantius' eyes and terrible to what was infecting the free company that he believed the only solution to Mr. Floaty Head was to kick us from the free company so that we couldn't spoil anything else again in the future. The next day, my friends. The next day. I get a call from an officer in Discord. A way scarier thing than in the pink. It's a voice call to show how serious the free company was taking my transgression. Tramali gets on and asks, What in the fuck have you done? What have you done? I've got Dantius screaming to kick me and Warsaint from the buns of light immediately. I was so confused. I was so lost. How do I even deal with this? I took a deep breath and I took the time to discuss with Tramali about Mr. Floaty Head and how much I now regretted using the phrase Mr. Floaty Head of how serious this had become and I constantly had to say the phrase Mr. Floaty Head while discussing being kicked from my free company that I very much enjoyed. So I explain it all exactly how I remembered it and the comment that I got from Tramali was Is this seriously what the fuck this is all about? <laughs> GG Tramali <laughs> Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on So what you're telling me <laughs> is you called something Mr. Floaty Head? That's what the problem is Oh, sweet Jesus <laughs> Now, you will probably be for, uh, forgiven for the, thinking this was the end of the story. You would think, obviously, I've explained this to an officer. He understands how ridiculous this is. And it would all be sorted out. But no. As it wasn't being dealt with, Dantius went up the chain of command. Dantius went to the free company leader in the mix. To try and get me and Warsaint removed from the free company. Because we were now poison. Poison to the free company. So here I am. And all I could kept saying is, why is this a big deal? I don't understand. I'm trying my damnedest to understand why you're so fucking mad. But why the fuck is this a big deal? I don't understand. Why has Dantius gone off the deep end about this? Well, after Tramali got in contact with the free company leader and gave him my side of the story, and what happened as well as War Saint taking screenshots of what was in the chat so it couldn't be manipulated. He went to reply, There's loads of bosses with floating heads in this game. How the fuck is this a spoiler? I don't know what's going on. 
Now, both myself and Warsank were pretty relieved that the free company leader was replying this way. I'm thinking, okay, this must be sorted now, right? This has got to be over. We've been to an officer. We've now got the free company leader involved. It's just a misunderstanding or something that Danzius has a personal problem with. But fucking no. No. We were wrong. A few days pass, ladies and gentlemen. A few days go by. Um, we're doing our thing, getting materials and stuff while shooting the shit in the free company chat, as you tend to do, when all of a sudden, a message a, a message appears. A paragraph Andy from Dantius. Dantius is leaving the guild. He's going to be leaving the Discord. And they're going to be moving over to the Chaos Crawlers. After what's recently happened, it's become very apparent that the Buns of Light has become a poison, unsafe place for us to spend our time. The chat of the Free Company itself is no longer a safe place to be for those who want to enjoy a pure Final Fantasy XIV experience. Our reply to Paragraph Andy was, thank fuck for that. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> oh, good news. <laughs> At least this isn't our problem anymore. <laughs> but this is when something really weird happened. And I don't know how this has happened. But when Dantius was leaving... They took the furniture down in the free company house. We noticed it started to disappear, leaving us wondering what else, what's going on here? Most of our furniture in the right hand side of the house was gone, as well as all our NPC vendors. It wasn't a big deal, but it was so strange. At least they couldn't pull a wow officer leaving and empty the free company bank before going. But it's an odd thing to do on the way out. Like they wanted to make the point that they were taking their ball and going home. It's like, well, if you don't like me, well, I'm going to take the things I contributed as well. I'm going to redecorate our whole house and make a nice empty spot. And then you will notice that we're missing. They acted like they had no idea how it happened, but I mean, it clearly happened. So we thought all's well that ends well, right? And it's good to see someone that caused so much bizarre drama over nothing leave. But to go to the free company we had friends and stuff in, that being, of course, the Chaos Crawlers, eh. But months go by. Months and months go by. And we joke about Mr. Floaty Head. And we even made ourselves a joke link shell with everyone that was in on it. But mainly, we moved on from this. We moved on. Now... In the Chaos Crawlers, we would join in on their events and the new Alliance raid. We would all join in to have a good time together. Help other friends out and even being on Discord chat. We were able to call out what the bosses do for those sprouts who were new to the fight. But while this was happening, we realized that Dantius was there too. Just back there, fuming, angry about us in some way. I will admit I did to do this, and maybe you will disagree with me, or maybe even dislike that I did this, but I apologized. And War Saint apologized. We just wanted to move on with it. We weren't sure what we were apologizing for, but we decided we just wanted things to be fine and move on from it. That's all we wanted. It was more of a, I'm sorry you feel that way. But an, an apology nonetheless. But it really means nothing if, if I'm not wrong and you are thinking wrong, but in a nice way that they think they're getting something out of it, right? It was like a half-assed something. Sometimes that works and other times it can backfire on you. So I don't recommend you use this strategy, but it was anyway. Dantius complained about Tremali because after we gave our apology, Dantius expected an apology from everybody. And while me and War Saints had given our half-hearted apology, 
Tramali hadn't. <laughs> what a piece of shit. What an absolute piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> what an absolute piece of shit this fucking guy is. Oh my god. Dadzia started to openly complain about Tramali. No apology. All they did was try and figure stuff out and following the evidence, stuck his ground with that and made Dantius very unhappy and hold a grunge for months later, it seems. Because when Dantius chatted up the Chaos Crawler's leader... They got into another conversation with us saying that Tramali is now banned from taking part in any of the joint free company events because Tramali, who had not made them apology, was making Dantius and the others that had moved very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. So, I mean, Tramali's out. I mean, what did he do? Let's think about it, guys. He was, he was actually kind of guilty. He listened to the evidence made a call on it, and then went forward with that decision. What a dick. What a dick. So, I honestly, I'm thankful Tramali won't be around. I, the last thing I need around me is some uh, level-headed people. We don't want that. Now, I want to be clear with you all listening to this tale right now. I have been in many other MMOs and different guilds as well. I have never had something like this happen. Never. Not from, like, a spoiler that wasn't even a spoiler. But I can say people like this that cause so many problems over the tiniest things, kick them. Just kick them as quickly as humanly possible. First off, our guild leader of the Buns of Light was so pissed that he just wanted to cut ties with the Chaos Crawlers altogether. So he called a free company meeting. <laughs> Now, I remind you all, this is months after the floaty head incident. Months after. And now we're here having to have a free company meeting about this. We got into a big group chat. Mainly a lot of the conversation was, how in the fuck is this still a thing? How is this? And are we really going to lose our friends in the other free company because of this? In the end, we did decide, no. Dancius is the problem. Not the free company. We had so many friends in there. And we played with them all the time. And we didn't think it would be fair to actually sort of segregate everybody off. Now, I want to say that everything is fine and doing well. But it's not. Remember, this all happened when Endwalker released. And it's still going on today. We warned the Crawler's leader to just keep an eye on Dantius. As his actions nearly tore things apart. And the crawler's leader being too nice a guy for their own good. And the sort of person has not going to deal with drama, drama well. But I can say our static is still around and killing savage bosses along the way. Even mixing things up and doing past bosses to get sweet mounts for those that don't have them. I also want to say that having an officer like Tramali in your officers for a guild or whatever is the right kind of guy to have. They'll stick up for what is right. Now I will say this, and maybe I went too far... <laughs> I changed my character name to Floaty Head. So watch out. <laughs> based. <laughs> Absolutely based. So I tell you all, if you see Floaty Head walking through Gridania or walking through Uldar or Old Charlian, be careful because I may just spoil things for you too. Now, preacher in the audience, am I guilty or is Dantius guilty? Uh, I think it's fair to say, I actually don't know if the second boss of the raid has a floaty head. I hope it does. <laughs> I really hope he does. You are clearly not guilty. You are clearly not guilty. Dantius, however, needs to... Uh, what's the phrase of the, of the phrase of the day, my friends? Touch grass. I think that's the appropriate phrase here. If I have ever could apply touch grass to anybody, uh, it, would be, it would be that. Get a fucking life. It used to be get a fucking life, but these days we call it touching grass. Uh, yes. <clears throat> you did the second boss on normal. I love that you think I can remember that boss. 
I love that you guys think I can remember that one hour period we were in the raid for. I remember the story of Pandemonium. I know what's going on in Pandemonium, but I absolutely adore that you guys think I remember the second boss of that raid. I have no fucking idea. I have no idea. I forgot Mr. Floaty Head. I do. It's the one with the floaty head. <laughs> you absolute dickheads. <laughs> How can you forget, Mark? It's the one with the floaty head. <laughs> you absolute idiots. <laughs> you forget. All right. Oh, my God. Uh, I should never give you guys the opportunity to talk. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. I'm actually kind of down with this. Go. So throughout the years, we have had a great deal of tales, uh, from certainly World of Warcraft with the perils of dating, but I suspect my gut instinct is way worse in FF14. My gut instinct is that it's really bad over here. All right. We've got Dan's. Really, Bex, you chose all the people who put Dan the Hunter, Zen the Shaman. <laughs> Some bears. Some bears. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Bex. Appreciate that. Think you think you can get away with it because you got corona. You got the they got the corona, so you think you can say whatever. Who's the tank? I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> okay. Uh the tag here is how uh how a, what, a single FF14 free company relationship. Oh, God. Ruined one person's life? Motherfucker. Okay. <clears throat> oh, it's from a new viewer. Hello. Welcome to you. Uh, no free company name needed there. Hello, Preacher. I've only been watching you for a few weeks, but I love drama time on a Friday and doing a few grindy things in FF14. Lurker confirmed. My story isn't the most crazy, but while there were no significant repercussions to life or limb, I still thought it might be fun to post my little drama to see if I can make it into an episode. Well, welcome. Here you are. Here you are. Of course, uh, our story takes place in FF14, and we do. We encourage some FF14 stories to come out. For the most part, myself, Dan the Hunter, and Zen the Shaman would hang out with one another and a few other random friends who would come around. Our group was quite large and a lot of fun was to be had. None of us had any, had any real commitment to a free company and the prospect of getting a house was too tempting to pass up. Oh, we're going to make our own free company with our own house, with our own hookers. I see where this is going. Okay. So soon then. Of course, as to be expected, Dan the Hunter announced she was going to make a free company. Of course, everyone in our little friends group was invited, and those that weren't pr uh, particularly close to their free company joined immediately, myself included. I was so excited to spend my time with the people that I'd already been spending all this time with, but now we would have a home. I was excited for another reason as well. This was the first free company... I had ever joined. And I felt like I had looked out. We were all pre-existing friends. We'd all basically been a team since forever. And now we had a more convenient chat to talk to each other. It was going to be so good. We had a silly little, silly ranking to go together. We had dumb free company name. Uh, the compromise of an inside joke. We did maps together. Dungeons. We made it our own Discord even. And even planned on trying to recruit at some point. So maybe this thing can grow and be good. What? What's the matter with you? What? Oh, I spelled... Okay. Really? You gotta wait till like three quarters of the way through drama time. Died. Okay. <clears throat> In our Discord, we would often even organize sessions of other games. Monster Hunter, Destiny, anything that could be played with our group of friends, we wanted to do it. It was so much fun. And I actually felt what people talk about so much is having a real group of friends in the online world. Aww. Hey. Right? Pals. Pals, th th pals through death and thick and thin. We'll crush worlds together, my friends. We will crush worlds and bring peace and paradise no matter where we go. 
Before too long, though, I noticed that our free company chat had gone quiet. This wasn't how it was supposed to be. We had made a home for ourselves. Day after day, I noticed that there was just less and less people online. And even when people were online, the conversation had dwindled. It was sparse. Something had changed. This was nothing like it was when we first started. Why was there like... Where's the friendship? The camaraderie? Where's the soul and the spirit that was here so just a short while ago? One day I got a message in the pink. It was from Zen. I said they were depressed. Ow, what's happened? What, are you okay? I replied. I'm not okay, said Zen. I'm having relationship issues. In game. And I'm feeling like the people just want to hang out so they can have cool screenshots for Facebook. I offered what little advice I could with my limited knowledge, but before long, the details of the situation started to come out. Zen admitted that they had fallen for someone in game. He said he had sent messages such as, You're the only reason I still play Final Fantasy XIV. I love you. You're my favorite person ever to hang out with. Those phrases were frequently said. However, any advancements made were quickly shut down. And despite the cool screenshots they had taken, they were all personal only and refused to share them since it might give the impression that the two were dating. <laughs> Do not post that on Facebook. We're not dating. Do not share, uh, and this is a warning to all you guys as well. Do not share screenshots of me and you in the same image. I'm married, okay? I don't want anybody thinking we're together, all right? So if you take a screenshot of me and your character, that's just for you, all right? That's just for you. You keep that in the fucking bank, all right? You archive that, some bitch. You archive that shit. If I, my wife catches a glimpse of me in game with another person, I'm in fucking trouble. We need to get serious again. But you have a picture with me and Emma? You fucking my wife? You fucking my wife? Can I watch? Go on. <coughs> Bruh. <laughs> you what? <laughs> Zed the shaman. Okay, we need to stop laughing. We need to be depressed again. Stop laughing. Stop laughing, okay? <clears throat> Zed the shaman. Also mentioned. Now, sometimes they would just talk to this person for hours. Privately. But as soon as somebody else would come along, one of their friends, they would ignore Zen the Shaman. Just drop Zen and stop talking to her. Oh, is that a girl? I don't know what it is. Maybe this is gendered, but I assumed this uh, kind of tragic story would be from a guy's POV. <laughs> Does that make me a misogynist? <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> Just assume. <laughs> the assumption was there. Anybody this thirsty must be a guy. Oh well. <laughs> now we know. A lesson for us all, my friends. A lesson for us all. <sighs> I sympathize with Zen. 
and offered what advice I could, but it was clear this was getting to them. They logged on less, was less responsive and just often gloomy to even hang out with. I tried to get more and more details and soon found out that the person that they were trying to woo was in fact Dan the Hunter. In hindsight, it was obvious, but at the time I was surprised. I can't read it. It's so tragic. <laughs> it's too sad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you have to fuck you, Bex, for giving me this story. Oh my god. Okay. <clears throat> I have to say this with a straight face. This is very sad. Okay, let me let me go from the beginning. <clears throat> I got more details and soon found out the person that they had been trying to woo was in fact Dan the Hunter. In hindsight, it was obvious, but I was surprised. Because Zen knew, Zen was well aware that Dan the Hunter had an in-game wife. So, I mean... <laughs> There's no hope in the future. There's no hope of a future there. There's no way we can go. <sighs> After I found this out, I let Zen the Shaman know that this changes a lot of things. I know you're depressed, but Dan the Hunter is married in game. And Zen, you are clearly wrong to try and sabotage that precious relationship. I tr tried to play a more passive role in this. But I was surprised Zen would even entertain the idea of anything happening with Dan the Hunter who had already committed to someone else. But sadly, my, th my friends, things kept heating up. Every day, Zen was sending me whispers of how depressed they were. I, of course, contacted Dan about this. To which Dan says, I'm so fucking sorry for dragging you into this. And one day, as it always was going to be, it hit boiling point. Zen had left the free company. And our free company fun, our free company little group that was so happy such a short time ago, was beginning to disband. I suggested everybody take a week to cool off. Let things settle down, yeah? Before it all implodes. Just take a week to breathe, okay? And we could try again. We could try again. We could start from scratch. Pretend it never happened. However, two days later, I logged in and found that the ownership of the free company had been passed to me. Dan the Hunter had also left. I was crushed. Our fun little free company had lasted hardly two months before it had crumbled. I did the only logical thing I could, and I transferred the ownership to a random alt that was in the free company and bailed out of this cesspool as quickly as I could. I had taken all the drama I could, and while I was still on good terms with everyone, I was sick of being caught in the middle of this. I needed a break from Final Fantasy XIV myself. This all happened within two months. I know we're laughing, but fuck me, this is ridiculous. <laughs> this is this is insanity. This is insanity. This is crazy. <clears throat> but I know it was very serious for you at the time. I noticed our Discord was still active at the very least. Apparently Zen had gone into a meltdown. And it was obvious an event had taken place. Something had happened. But only I and Dan the Hunter knew what was going on behind the scenes. Whatever had happened, Zen had now blocked Dan the Hunter on everything. And refused to interact with them. 
Even I seem to be caught in the crossfire. As I later found out, I was Zen's listed backup marriage partner. <laughs> we have a list of backup marriage partners? I don't have that list. Should we put it on our adventure plates? Where do we where does this list believe? <laughs> There's nothing chad about backup marriage partners. Where do we write this down? <laughs> I need to know. And because I was on the list, I was blocked on all accounts. I was left out of activities. And it felt like an unwelcoming environment when I would show up or talk in our Discord. Not even two weeks later. Not even two weeks later, I found out that Zen started a brand new free company. With a ran one with a random friend they seem to have made. I was annoyed. They had started all this and decided to just make a new one. And of course, I never, never so much as saw an invite. However, this is the point where I go from just being annoyed to angry at the injustice of what was going on. One day, <laughs> I check my friend list. And what do I see? Fucking Dan the Hunter as well as some bears have joined Zen's new free company. <laughs> so just you got left out? <laughs> now I presume they were both invited and so despite being an outsider in all of this, I was the one who ultimately lost an entire group of friends. I was ignored in Discord. I was left out of any activities. And I just felt like nobody wants me here. So for me, that was enough. With my entire friend group shattered, I had only one recourse and I transferred my character off the realm. I still send messages in the Discord and keep in contact. Part of me feels we're on mostly good terms. Are you fucking joking? You still feel you're on good terms. But I know I'm out of the core friend group at this point. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Are you insane? You had to transfer away because they ditched you on all accounts. And you still think like there's a chance? That's, that's, that's some mech. Yeah. Run. Run. Run for your life. Run. Free. What hurt me the most, Mike and audience, is the injustice. That's what hurts me the most. Thank you for reading. That was painful. <laughs> this is painful. <laughs> Are you sure you're telling the whole side of this? Now, call me crazy, but I feel like there's more here. There has to be. For it to fall on you from both sides. It, yeah, I th it just feels... It does, right? It feels like there's another side here. I want some, that. Yeah, I, if if Dan the Hunter or Zen the Shaman are listening to this, if you're listening to this, I want to know: is this accurate or what? Because it's it sounds fucked up. Are you sure you weren't shit talking someone? When you say you gave the advice, you could. What was that advice exactly? Right? What was that advice exactly? That's what I want to know. What was your advice? Sus. It feels sus. Who's with me on the sus? It feels sus to me, right? Put on your detective hat. Get to the bottom of this. We'll send it to Bex. Okay, the chat agrees. Sussy, right? There's something sussy going on here. I want to know more. All right. Uh, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can uh oh okay all right we're going over to wow for this one all the preacher and the glorious brofist to you and your cold cold hearted chat i mean true but mean yeah, i mean it's true but still i mean look how quickly they whipped out the wow what the fuck i feel attacked 
<laughs> no cake. All right. I've been playing World of Warcraft on and off since late vanilla, but not seriously until the WAD Legion scenario. Unfortunately, I only just discovered drama time at the beginning of Battle for Azeroth. Hello. The stories you highlight have brought my friends and I many giggles. The pool building magician. <laughs> Was it San Carlo? Giancarlo? The pool building magician for Knight Spec Ops nearly made me rip a piss. <laughs> Is it Jean Carl? Jean Luca? Jean Luca? Yes. Never forget Jean Luca. Never forget Jean Luca. Oh, we miss him so much. What a glorious, chiseled human being he was. A wizard and a contractor. What a guy. Now onto the drama. This story comes to you from the glorious land of freedom itself, the United States of America. Battle for Azeroth is coming to a close. A couple of real-life friends and I, with our moderate mythic success, were toying with the idea of starting our own guild. And ahead of the curve, early mythic raiding guild with various real-life friends and other in-game friends that we had played with in the past. Most were looking for a not-so-nerdy hardcore environment of uh, other boomers to better cater to them. Many friends came back that hadn't played in 10 plus years. We were so excited to actually have a legitimate core of buds ready to go at the start of the much anticipated, wondrous, and can't fail expansion, the Shadowlands. Hmm. <laughs> now, even though I'm new to drama time, I realize that this was basically doomed from the start. But. There was a chance. <laughs> there was a chance. And that fantastic potential for the dream clouded my better judgment that you've regaled us with for so many years. <laughs> yes. As usually goes with this sort of thing, it started off wonderfully. That copium adrenaline running through our ven veins, how could it possibly go wrong? We had little to no issues with everyone leveling and gearing enough to start normal mode the week of launch and quickly progressed onto heroic. Now, like many guilds, we were surprised by what seemed to be an overtuned, too hard Castle Nathria. Relative to the relative difficulty of previous heroic raids. Was that the case? Oh, someone remind me. Oh, yeah. Sludge Fist Heroic was not a joke. Was Nathria Heroic overtuned? Uh, I can't remember. Z Zymox? Uh, hmm. Yeah, week one was pretty tough. Yeah, I, I have a skewed perspective with my guild. It was. Heroic wasn't just extra normal. Yeah, it was pretty hard. Not as much gear was the way. Uh, many nerfs later. Yeah, it was initially. Okay, I remember Sludge Fist Heroic not being a bit of a joke. Sludge Fist Heroic was uh, a little bit rough. Even still, that was fine. Uh, we marched on making regular progress up until we hit the big boy himself, Big Dick, Sire Denathrius. Now I'll tell you this progress was so frustratingly fraught with issues that we were not that were not the typical issues that would create such a wall. First of all, we could not for the life of us figure out why our paladin tank was getting absolutely clapped. And basically he was spending our raid progress as being what we described as a one battle res handicap. <laughs> That's worse than being the floor inspector. So what I'm saying to you guys is you're essentially a one battle res handicap on our raid progress. <laughs> now, he wasn't like a god tank. He wasn't the best tank. But he knew how to press his fucking buttons. It shouldn't have been like this. Going through two other pally tanks confirmed that it was just a shit fight for paladins. LOL, Blizzard, class balance. <laughs> and we really really trying to find a non-paladin after the second paladin tank we went through but it seemed everyone was just drawn to playing paladin tanks the thing we heard from a lot of the people we tried to recruit who had also been kicked from other guilds for being paladin tanks was that they really really liked divine sh they're throwing the shield <laughs> now that's not my fault Although I definitely said that I would play a paladin just so I could have that ability, which some people may have used, but that ability is genuinely really good. So it is really fun. <laughs> it is really, really fun. Like the Kyrian, Kyrian, Kyrian shield is good. That's not my fault. Yeah, it's a very, very good ability. It's very good. 
We eventually, though, resolved the tank issue, but we didn't have the DPS to hit the timers now. <sighs> we didn't have the heal. We didn't have. And we also then found out we don't have the healing to handle dealing with the extra mechanics that happen later. We tried shaving it down politely. Oh, what did they do? All right, heroic raiders. What, what, what always happens if you're struggling with your raid team in heroic in World of Warcraft? What's the solution that the, 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 the raid leaders always go to straight away? <clears throat> Reduced numbers. Yeah, Jack's got it. Let's, I tell you what, it's probably a scaling issue, guys. It's probably a scaling issue. Let's just test something. Let's say get rid of the shitters and reduce it down to the goods. The 10 goods. Okay, let's just see what happens. It'll be really interesting. I'm, I'm curious whether it's a blizzard scaling issue. So what we'll do is we'll just trim some of the fat and we'll see what happens then. <laughs> we reduced the group down to our 10 good players on an off night and found that somehow... Oh, interesting. <clears throat> we reduced it down to the 10 best players on an off night not to annoy anybody or upset them. Oh, bless your hearts. Uh, if that was Alex, Alex would invoke that right within the first 20 minutes. He would. And he has done in the past. I've been there. <laughs> I've been there and Alex has gone, right, let's just kick everybody out of the raid and we'll see what happens. <laughs> but weirdly enough, the fight got harder. Question mark, question mark, question mark. I guess we were late to the game in realizing how much easier this boss is if you were exactly 25 or 25 plus people. So, we were stuck on Sire Denathrius... Fuck me. We were stuck on Sire Denathrius Heroic for a month. And in that month, we barely progressed past the beginning of Phase 3. Bruh. That sucks. Wow. Eventually, we had to start pugging players in an attempt to have adv advantageous scaling while maintaining the ratio necessary to ensure the guild would get the achievement. As you can imagine, this was fucking dreadful. And my frustration was the start of where the drama began. While we were doing this heroic stuff, I started to pug Mythic. Even in just the group finder, I was able to get 2 out of 10. Really? That's actually pretty impressive. You just Shriekwing Mythic on a pug? That's pretty good. And Huntsman? It would have been Huntsman, right? That's pretty impressive. A lot of guilds can't get past Huntsman. I know you usually rail against people staying in guilds that can't progress further. <laughs> this is twisting my words. Alright, it's... <laughs> That is twisting my words. I know you usually rail against people staying in guilds that can't progress further than one could just pug. I mean... In Heroic... If the... Look, let me put some context to that before you judge me in, inappropriately. If a, if a normal pug is regularly killing the bosses you're stuck on, yes... Yeah, I'll rail against that. If, you, if you're spending a month, let me clarify. If it's taking your guild a month to kill Sire Denathrius Heroic, but you could just leave that group, join a pug for Sire Denathrius Heroic, and just kill it, yeah. Right? But I will say, even with some of the best players like I've ever played with, we could not kill... Raven remembers, he was there for that. <laughs> It was bad. We couldn't kill as 10-man. There is definitely some jerky 10-man scaling. Let's say that. There is definitely some jerky 10-man scaling. But I really enjoyed playing with these guys. I did. They were my friends. And I was a little surprised drama had basically been non-existent despite us being there for a month. I felt in my heart of hearts, my friends, we were only three or four good players short of killing this boss. Or at least getting the first two mythic kills together. So I tried to have my cake and eat it too. I had a friend raid leading a guild. But not only had killed Sire Heroic, but was already at 2 out of 10 mythic. They were progressing on the Hungering Destroyer. One week, I got a whisper. If I could 
fill in for a DPS who hadn't showed up for the raid. Now, after talking further with my friend, the raid, and with the blessing of the GM, I decided to gear my alt and do what I described as a main switch for my current guild once the alts could perform similarly to my main character. I would then server transfer my main to join the other guild. Now, since the raid nights of both guilds didn't overlap, what's the problem? I was going to raid in both of them. I figured it was perfection. They're both progressing at different rates. Maybe, maybe I could even figure stuff out with one guild to help the other guild progress faster. And eventually, the time came that my alt was caught up. It was, and I stress this, an objectively better class, so it didn't take as long as you would think. As an officer, and I was an officer of the guild, which I probably should have mentioned earlier, I knew how to handle this transition properly. So, I did the honorable thing. I opened my Discord, and I wrote a wonderful message in the guild announcement channel. The channel has since been cleared, but what I have explained to you above is damn near the same as the announcement I made. It will cause no issues with our current raid schedule. I can even help us out a little bit. All should be fine. As you can imagine, unlike me at the time, this caused the Discord to fucking melt down worse than Chernobyl. <laughs> okay, let me... I haven't read on. Is this actually a problem? Because I don't have a problem with this. At all. Is how many of you actually have a problem with this? It's on different raid nights. It's fine. The, the issue comes up when he's like clearly ignoring one of his characters, which I suspect will happen. I suspect where this is going is that the character he leaves, he leaves in his less progressed guild just starts to get ignored. No, but why announce it? I think that's fair to let the other guild know, uh, to let your guild know. Because he has to move his main character, right? So his character is going to leave the current guild. He's taking that with him. So he has to announce what's going on. Just letting you know, I'm, I am going to be raiding with this character in another guild. I have leveled and geared a new character for our guild. I'm still going to be here for our raids. And it's actually a better class for what we need right now. So... <clears throat> Yeah, I'd prefer if his uh, main didn't leave. Yeah, I can see I can see that. There's definitely some tension that's going to come from this because there's no way you're maintaining both characters unless you're a Giga Nerd. That's when it's going to be a problem. Okay. <clears throat> Here's how it went wrong. Ten minutes after I posted my message, two other people responded saying they were leaving as well. They didn't even type it in a full sentence is one thing I noticed. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. I know where this is going. I'm out. <laughs> Those people have been listening to Drama Time. They were like, yeah, I'm out. I know what's happening. I'm going. Those that had been shopping around for the guilds due to our lack of progression also followed very quickly after. Yeah, a month on side in Atreus, there's definitely some disgruntled players in there. They might not be voicing it, but they're there. Some others saw the writing on the wall. They didn't leave. They just sort of went, eh, I wouldn't... I'm not invested anymore. Even still. However, having said that, the remaining core continued to go into heroic and clear as far as we could. And to my word, I swear to you now, preach an audience. I was at every single raid on my alt up until a different drama happened, which I'll tell you about in a different story. But that's what eventually ripped the guild apart, not me. So, Preacher of the Terrifying Chat, you called Cold. Oh, he wants our judgment on this. How do you judge my actions? Through conversations after the fact, as the guild is dead now, the biggest issue for most was that I did this as an officer and it created a panic since leadership appeared to be jumping ship. How does the court stand? Am I guilty due to my officer role? Would I still be guilty if I was just a, a member? 
I appreciate you sharing us in all the drama time stories. I wish you and yours the happiness and good health. Cheers. The cake have our eats. I can't have both. Okay. Before I look at the chat, I'm, I'm not looking at them right now. I will say this. Yes, you are guilty. Okay. If you were a member, and this is obviously not a particularly serious guild, right? You're, you're aiming to clear heroic and do a couple of um, mythic bosses by the end of the tier. So it's not a giga serious guild. So with your members, you can have a bit of flexibility. However, as an officer, if I was a member and one of my officers said they were doing this, 100% I believe the guild is dead immediately. Uh, because if you're stuck at a boss for a month and not progressing, and one of your officers says, hey, by the way, guys, I'm going to go to this better progressed guild. I'm definitely still going to raid with you guys on an alt. I am reading that message, no matter what words you type in any Discord messages, that it's not going to be a problem, as this guild is dead because the officers are leaving. And you, if you're giving us your alt in tribute and you'll still come and raid with us, yeah, 100% I read that as that guild dying. Um, <clears throat> so it's not surprising, especially because some of your players are already disgruntled. If I was doing, like, a really non-serious guild, like, I mean, my last... Not my last guild, but the last group I played with, they all raided in different guilds and we got together for Heroic and nobody gave a shit, right? It was fine. It was not an issue. If, like, grown-up players you can be happy with, but moving to a better progress guild, taking your main, yeah, that's going to kill the guild. Uh, I'm seeing someone hotter, but we're still friends. Yeah, that's the impression. Guilds should have just been better. They, they should. Should have left the main. I think if you would have left your main character, that probably might have been better, but even still... Even still, as an officer, going and playing with a different guild, a better progressed one, I'm definitely reading that as you're going to uh, ignore the other team. Yeah, 100%. It stings. Yeah, it, it doesn't signal a good place. Let's face facts. Let me put it this way to you, Arthur. If everything was hunky-dory in your guild, and your guild wasn't stuck on a boss, would you have still done it? Let me ask you that question. If your guild was progressing normally and doing some mythic bosses and go if your guild was doing all right and not hard stuck would you have done it still to play with your friends because that's what you're saying oh i'm gonna play with my friends they're about the same way okay you changed my mind that's that's the point right would you have still done it or would you have gone no i'm fine over here i can help out for one raid sure but i mean i'm not gonna like regularly raid with you guys so it feels many in many ways you're disguising the fact that you wanted to leave for a better guild and were trying to make it nice for the other guys. That's how I would take it. Oh, yeah, fuck that. If you don't want to deal with that guild anymore, move on. Not guilty. Yeah, but he didn't do that, though. He, like, half left. Like, half left. That's how he was doing it. He was, like, half out the door on his way. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that brings the end of drama time for this week. It is time to love and leave. Oh, my God. Has my wife seen this? Oh my god. I can't believe you have this. God. I can't believe you have Jesus this. Christ, dude. What are you god, trying to do to me? Jesus are you Christ, trying to ruin dude. my what marriage? What, what, what will she think when she sees this? What will she think when she sees this? What will she think? What will she think when she sees this? What will she think? Yeah, this is a home wrecker scenario. Are you can explain? Can you explain? Are you can explain? Ridiculous. 6 p.m. tomorrow. The stream will probably up 24 hours from now, more than likely. 24 hours from now, or even not a bit earlier, we will be live with the biggest party we can possibly throw for you guys. But it's only a big-ass fun party if you guys show up. Would love to see you guys. If you have some free time tomorrow, or if you've never been to an FF14 party, be here. Be square. You can even make an alt and join in. If you've never... I think you can, yeah? I'm not even sure if free trial accounts can come. I'm not sure. If free trial accounts can be there. Any Noahs on that? Can they come to the wards? Probably not, because it's Heaven's Ward, right? Uh, to get into our place. Uh, they can. Oh, they're good. What time does it start? 24 hours from now. If you're around here 24 hours from now, it's going to be good. What server is it on? We will be on the main party. The main after party will be on Spriggan on Chaos. Uh, but we can data center travel, so we're going to light. Heaven's Ward is free, but if you were like... Uh, I'm asking for those people who don't really play FF14. If you were to use the free account right now, could you come to the party? If you have someone that is a friend and has a house there... Hmm. Because I know you can't join a free company on a trial account. No, yep. Not true. 
Light one, I think. No. Should be able to. All right. Seems mixed. No. Yes, you can get ported there if you grind. No, you need to beat 3.3 .3 for Ishgard City. You need to finish Heaven's Ward. Uh, oh, you'd have to blitz the MSQ. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. I was just trying to give you another option. So it doesn't look like you'd have time to do that anyway. Because uh, you shouldn't skip the story. Even if you were to turbo level the MSQ, you would not be welcome at the party as a filthy skipper. And therefore, Dantius would come for you. Or Floaty Head would come for you. All right? So we do not encourage that around here. Because Mr. Floaty Head is stalking you every step of the way. For everyone else, you could buy a boost if you wanted to. And then you can replay the story on New Game Plus. You could do that as well. But uh, <laughs> it should be happening tomorrow. If you're coming to the big after party, I suggest being on Chaos uh, Spriggan. But we will be going to Phoenix Light uh, before that to obviously have the rejoining itself. So that's where the rejoining will take place. And then we will bring them over to our world where we can have all the madness and fun. All right. <laughs> it should be good. Uh, I mean, look. Those of you here thinking about it, do you I mean, not want to party with these guys? Those of you here thinking about it, I, 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 how did I know if I alt tab back into the game? I, 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 how did I know if I alt tab with weapons drawn? How did I know if I alt tab with weapons drawn? You don't want to be at the party? The stage is set. You don't want to be at the party? The stage is set. You don't want to be at the party? The stage is set. The stage is set, my friends. The stage is set, my friends. Echo. The stage is set, my friends. Echo. How do I have an echo? Oh, I have my own stream open. How do I have an echo? Oh, I gifted you guys subs. Sorry. Sorry that I upset you with my generosity. All right. Apologies. You can see the janitors are hard at work. Getting it clean. Getting it ready for you. The stage is up. The dungeons are set. The glams are coming out. This entire ward is going... This entire place is going to be a party tomorrow. This whole place is going to be a big-ass party. 24 hours from now, ladies and gentlemen. 24 hours from now, it will be happening. Thank you. Don't take screenshots with me. Don't. You're going to get me in trouble. It's going to be amazing. I hope to see you there, guys. And I shall see you all tomorrow. Get yourself some drinks as well, because uh, I'm going to be getting drunk anyway. Bye, everybody.